come in and hit share. Sharing is caring. Good evening, good evening to each and every one of you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to Oak Grove NBC Apex. Wednesday now, the first Wednesday now of 2024, and we're grateful to God, certainly grateful to God, and grateful for you for tuning in. Uh, if you have not already did so, if you hit that share button as we uh, will share together on tonight. Um, and before we go into our lesson uh, for um, this evening, I want to just say by way of just reminders and points of reflection. First, to God be the glory uh, that we are in another year and we're grateful for what he uh, continues to do in our lives. We are in, we are uh, at the Grove, are in the midst of uh, 31 days of spiritual growth. Um, and and uh, what that channel, challenge looks like uh, is we're reading the word of God um, and uh, we're also taking time to focus on things each week as it relates to um, uh, consecration. And so we're believing God for the outcome and for the results uh, before the end of the month of January. But we collectively as a church, we are uh, in the midst of our fasting and consecration. And today, the first Wednesday of the month is normally our fast day in town. So uh, we did not um, put uh, promote that and, or post it rather simply because we're already in the midst of uh, a fast. And so if you decide, if you did go from 12 to three today, um, as we normally do every first Wednesday, um, then God bless you. If not, uh, certainly we're already in the midst of a fast. And so, uh, but certainly no, no, no harm if you uh, did um, the normal 12 to three time of just reflection and pausing um, to spend time with God. Uh, also by way of uh, re uh, point of reminders, rather, uh, we are just grateful to God that we are going into, amen, our winter revival 2020. And we have got uh, a magnificent or a great lineup uh, of preachers that the Lord has allowed to come and be a part of this. And so on tomorrow night, uh, which will be uh, January the 4th, uh, will be the Dr. Kathy Jones. Um, and uh, she hailed from the uh, Parkwood CME Church or Pastors of Parkwood CME Church in Charlotte. Uh, most of us know who, who she is. Services will begin at 7 o'clock p.m. And uh, next week will be a rest week for us as we will not have revival next week, but we'll jump back in on the 18th um, uh, with uh, the Reverend Dr. J. Vincent Terry, the pastor of Mount Peace uh, Missionary Baptist Church uh, in Raleigh. And then on the, 25th, on the 25th, the last Thursday of the month with uh, Bishop Sherman Blandon, who is the pastor of the Mount Moriah uh, Community Church in Wilson. And so tell a neighbor, tell, tell a friend uh, that we are in the midst of revival and that God is doing great things uh, where we're glad. And so to our Grovites, uh, please continue to stay plugged in as you want to be aware of what's going on within our church. Again, to all of our discipleship and our covenant partners. Thank you for a job well done in 2023. But now that we're in a new year, amen, we got to hit the ground running again and uh, seeing, to see what the Lord uh, desires to do within our midst. And so our declaration for our house, uh, for the house uh, is, this is the year of spiritual reset. And so we are, uh, you know, getting ourselves in position to be re-energized, refused, replenished, um, and uh, that we would be recharged uh, to to be about our father's business. And so we're hitting the reset button in every aspect, uh, all of our ministries, we're just hitting the reset button because it's important. It's important um, to have that, 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 that update, to have that 
uh, you know, resetting, um, uh, you know, even on our mobile devices or technical devices, um, we have to upgrade them. We have to reset them every so often. If not, they just out of sync. They, they, they don't operate as they should. And so we realize that the same thing for us as the people of God. We want to be uh, in top shape to do our Father's will. And so that is what our thing or our declaration embraces. Um, so on tonight, what we will do is we'll go into our Wednesday Now session, which will be the conclusion of our series, Family Matters. And then next week, normally the first uh, Wednesday of the month is uh, our time for prayer. Uh, but we instead, what we'll do is we'll do our prayer, um, joint prayer on next week. Um, and then on the following week, um, which should be around the week of uh, the 17th, we will um, go into our new series. So um, what we will do is we've already identified um, what this series will look like. Um, I don't have what I need to, you know, tonight, um, but nonetheless, we will get that out to you, um, to our discipleship this Sunday um, so that you can have a week to get what you need to get. Um, and then we'll also make sure that you are aware of it on next week so that you can, um, on this platform, so that you make sure that you can get what you need to get as well. So we're going to wrap up tonight, um, Family Matters. And, and if you've been following along with us, we've been dealing with this um, in, in this house from uh, since the month of October. And uh, it started off as a preaching series as, and, and then it just went into a teaching series. And um, the Lord led us another way in the preaching portion of it. And um, certainly we felt it was important for us to continue and and to finish this. And so tonight will be the conclusion of the whole matter. So uh, for just a point of refresher, just a point of refresher um, is that we, we've talked about uh, in our foundational scripture has been rooted in uh, Ephesians. Um, Ephesians uh, has been our foundational scripture. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 through 33 and we parallel other scriptures in that specifically from Genesis uh, when we look at the creation story where God made man and then made woman. Um, and then woman and man uh, were obedient to God's commandment, which was to be fruitful and multiply. And as a consequence, um, they had children. And uh, and so with that being stated, you, you have to go back and watch the replays. Uh, I can't uh, you know summarize everything, but uh, the order of God as relates to um, the family is God first. Uh, the husband, the wife, and then the children. Um, and that is not simply to uh, convey any type of lordship that the husband has over the wife or to say that he's better than the wife, but that's just how God ordained things for things, uh, for things to be. And uh, the thing that we I want to kind of uh, bring to our attention and, and remind us is um, there cannot be two heads. There cannot be two heads. Um, anything that has two heads is a monster. And so um, let us just remember that when we think about uh, our family structure, um, God is the head um, because he is the foundation on which we stand. But when we look at, uh, you know, uh, the family structure, we look at the husband and the wife and the children. You can't have more than one head um, because anything that has more than one head is a monster. And so we want to make sure that we don't have uh, but just one head. Um, and uh, with that one head, uh, yeah, I believe that God will be uh, pleased with that one head as it relates to our family structure. And so, again, that is not to convey, again, that the husband has, uh, you know, this should not consult with his wife or they should not have any type of dialogue or conversation. But what that is to suggest is that God left man responsible for the care and the attention and the frame of the family. Um, all of that falls on the man. And so, you know, we got to really be uh, intentional when we think about that. Um, not think about it from a carnal standpoint, um, because if we think about it from a carnal standpoint, we may suggest, uh, well, this is just an invitation for somebody to tell me, um, you know, you know, to do what I don't want to do and stuff like that. Uh, and I will say to that, uh, to any wife, uh, as long as the husband um, is not telling you to do anything that is ungodly, uh, immoral or that will cause harm um, to you uh, or anyone else. Um, you should uh, follow the leading and the guidance of your husband. Um, and, 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 and we've talked about how the husband, his role, amen, is to love the wife. Uh, the Bible says, love, husband, uh, love your wife, uh, uh, love your wife as Christ has loved the church. So the husband's role is to love his wife. But then we saw that the wife's role was to submit to the husband. 
Um, but if we really go back and just really even uh, set up even more emphasis, uh, you cannot marry or it's dangerous to marry somebody that if you are a male who, uh, if you are, if you're a male, obviously you'll be a husband uh, it, who will not submit uh, to God. Uh, and so when a man meets a woman, she should already be submissive to God because if she can't submit to God, there's no way she's going to submit to you. This is pure point blank. Same thing for the woman. Uh, if the if the man is not already loving God, there's no way that he's going to be able to love you. Love you. And so many times we're trying to. We, I think we we uh, in this time, you know, marriage doesn't seem to be of greater importance. But God does honor godly marriage. Let me just say that He does honor godly marriage because He instituted it. Uh, he created it. He ordained it. Uh, and I believe that God is still calling for godly marriages in these days and times. But we see in our society that. The 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 uh, uh, the the routes uh, or the roads that we travel seems to go against uh, or away from God's intention. God never intended for there to be two heads uh, in a marriage, uh, and, and, and neither did He intend for there to be a uh, uh, some type of hierarchy. And again, if you look at it from a carnal standpoint, you, you, you're going you're gonna mess up. You got to look at it from a spiritual standpoint. God made man responsible. And so one of the things that we suggest to you as a sister that's seeking a husband or that's seeking marriage. Now I notice I corrected myself because you shouldn't seek him. Um, you should seek God for him. Seek God for him and he should find you. Um, there's a way that God has orchestrated the marriage um, that the husband should find the wife, uh, not the wife find the husband. Uh, if you, uh, I will uh, say that if you are a woman and you are looking for the man and you, uh, you know, I'm looking for somebody out and you find him, you're already out of order because the Bible lets us know uh, that in Proverbs, he that find a wife find the good thing. Uh, you know, so so he that find it, he, uh, he, he, that lets, that lets us know the structure that God intended for marriage, um, that the man finds the woman. But you cannot find anything that's not hidden. So, you know, anyway, uh, again, you have to go back and watch um, the, 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 the teachings that we've had over the past um, several months. But nonetheless, God has instituted, instituted marriage and the family. And this is why uh, we're talking about family matters, because we will see something as we investigate on tonight that Adam and Eve came into, um, into contact. And as a result, they had the children. And we know uh, that's when Cain and Abel. Uh, uh, arrive on the scene and uh, something happened uh, in that situation. So let's let's go into our uh, our uh, scripture reading for tonight. So um, uh, our uh, three point. Let me just give you this: the three points uh, that we had for for those. Um, well, no, let me not even go into that. Go back and watch the recap replay because I'm messing something up. All right, folks, so tonight we're going to focus on the children. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 from the Amplified Classic Version says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord as his representatives, for this is just and right. So go ahead. Uh, children should obey their parents. Why? Because they are the physical representatives of God in the household. They are the uh, physical representatives of because we know God is the spirit. Um, they are the phys physical representatives for God and of God in the household. So he says to uh, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, for this is just and right. So it's the right thing to do. <laughs> you know, why should I obey my parents? Because God said so. And we're just going to leave it right there. There's no discussion about whether we should honor uh, and obey our parents. It's no discussion about that. It's clearly defined here in Ephesians as Paul writes to the church at Ephesus. So uh, point number one for tonight's lesson uh, is that the child's primary. So we said the husband's responsibility is to love the wife. The wife's responsibility is to submit. And the child's responsibility is to obey. Husband is to love Wife is to uh, submit and the child is supposed to obey. What does it mean to obey? Obey means to comply with the command, the direction or request of a person or a law to submit to the authority of. Now to act according to what you have been asked or ordered to do by someone in authority or to behave according to a rule, a law or instruction. 
So, so why is it important that children obey their parents? Why does a child need to obey? Uh, simply one, because God said so. But second, children are unable to care for themselves. And so because of, of, of them not being able to care for themselves, God has placed parents in the household um, to be his representatives. And so the children look uh, to the parents like we, uh, as, as the parents, look to God. The mother and the father, the husband and the wife, um, look to God as provider, looks to God as keeper, look at, looks to God as sustainer. And that's the same way that the children look as um, look. It's the same way that they look as uh, look to their parents. They look to their parents to be the keeper. Children don't they don't they don't ask you, uh, you know, do we have money to eat? They they they, they just let you know that they're hungry. Uh, and so there's something parallel there. The same way that we should look at God is the same way our children see us. And so uh, our children should obey first because God says so, but they're not able to care for themselves. They do not have uh, the maturity um, to care for themselves. No matter how bright they may be, uh, they are not mature enough to care for themselves. All right. Um, so next point here uh, is uh, obeying does not come naturally. Right. So you have to teach your child to obey. Uh, it must be taught and that teaching must be consistent. And so the role of the parent with the child is uh, that uh, the child must learn how to obey. Because obeying is not a learned behavior, okay? Um, you know, so you have to teach your children how to obey, and it must be consistent. Uh, they, you know, the children need consistency. Proverbs chapter two, verse uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse six from the Contemporary English Version says this: Teach your children right from wrong, and when they are grown, they will still do right. Okay, teach your children. Right from wrong. In other words, you as the parent have a responsibility not to buy them the latest pair of shoes, nothing wrong with it, not to buy them uh, the latest uh, outfits, nothing wrong with it, not to buy them uh, things that they may want, nothing wrong with it. But uh, a godly parent and in a godly household, you understand that you must teach your children how to obey. And part of that is teaching them right from wrong. You, you, you should in your household, you should have some type of structure uh, where you have implemented to teach your children right from wrong to where they should understand. And we've got to get past the uh, because I said so. We, we, we're living in a generation now, unfortunately, to where that 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 no longer really works. I, I know that you know, I'm, and I'm old school, but these children now are a lot more inquisitive. And so in my generation, you know, uh, you know. If a parent told you to do something, it's because I said so. Now, I, I am not condoning by by any way at all a, a child questioning their parent's authority. But uh, I have learned that children now will ask why not to be disrespectful. Uh, but they, they literally want to know why. They, they literally want to know why. why. Why should I do, you know, this and that? Why do we have to, you know? And, and you as a parent, you, got, you, you can't stand on the defense. Because uh, in the past, you know, you wouldn't dare ask why. And again, I'm not condoning disrespect, but I, these children now will ask a question because they're inquisitive. And so uh, as a parent, you got to understand that you're parenting God's way means that you can't look at, well, when I was raised, we're in a different day. There are some things that stay the same, such as you're still the parent, they're still a the child. But in the, as, a re, as it relates to, um, you know, children being unique and their uniqueness and what they are exposed to, because this generation is exposed to way more. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have Internet. Um, they didn't come out until, you know, 2000s uh, and uh, a computer in the house, you know, you know, people didn't have stuff like that. You know, all this YouTube and all this stuff. Uh, these children have so much access, so much more access. And so their minds are much more inquisitive. And so you as a parent, don't sit on the you know defensive side if your child, hey, ask, uh, you know, why do we have to do it this way? Uh, sometimes it's because they really want to know. Uh, and that's up to you, you know, whether you explain. But we, we can no longer uh, parent the way that we used to parent. And that is because I say so. Because the reality is... Uh, we ought to be able to explain, hey, this is why I'm telling you this. You know, we would say, you know, for instance, parents would say, somebody come to the door, do not answer the door. Okay, that, that was the, that was, you know, and you didn't ask why. 
But now when you, you, you know, you tell a child, you say, hey, you know, when, you know, somebody come to the door, do not answer the door. And, and here's why. Because uh, a, a stranger, we don't know them. And, uh, and strangers uh, may not be, uh, and strangers, we don't know if they're our friends or not. And so you have to teach that because we look at child abductions and all this stuff that's going on in our world today. So, so again, we, we cannot parent, if we're going to parent successfully as we did, uh, you know, 45 years ago. A lot has changed. Um, a lot has changed. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 through 3 from the Amplified Classic Version says, Honor, esteem, and value as precious your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. That all may be well with you and that you may live a long uh, or that you may live long on the earth. And so when the child does not honor and obey, they open themselves up to judgment. Let me say it again. If you look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 through 3, uh, Paul says that children should honor and obey. And this is the first commandment with promise. What is the promise? That if you as a child, now think about this. Now, now, now wait a minute, we're building something here. The, the, the parents teach the child how to obey. Right. But then he says here uh, in verses two through three that children should honor and obey their parents. For this is the first commandment with promise. Well, the question is, what if they're never taught to honor and obey? If they're not taught how to honor and how to obey, how can they, you know, how can they do it? And so your role as a parent is critical. You must teach your children right from wrong. You must teach them how to obey. And, and, and the text says that this is the first commandment with promise. And the promise is that it will be well with you and that you will live long on the earth. He did not say how long you will live. He didn't say you're going to live 80 years or 70 years. Uh, but he did say that you will live long on the earth and it may be well with you. And this is why it's not well with so many people uh, because of the way that they treat their parents. And that's just fact, you know, that's just straight facts. Uh, it, we don't, just like the, the wife does not have the option of whether she's going to honor her husband, the husband does not have an option of whether he's going to love his wife, the children don't have an option of whether they're going to honor and obey. You must honor and obey. And he says, this is the first commandment with promise. And it carries a weight that if the child does not honor and obey, after being instructed how to do so, because I don't believe that God is going to judge a child um, or, or, or judge when you don't know. Right. Um, and so uh, he's not unjust. Uh, he's a just God. But when they come into the understanding and they obey and they disobey, you open up yourself for judgment. And this is why we see a lot of times, uh, you know, they live a short life because uh, oftentimes it's the way. Go back and see how they treated their parents. God does not take kind if the parents are. The representatives, the representatives of God in the household. Then you gotta understand that as you do unto your parents, you're doing unto the Lord. And so we gotta, we gotta, we've gotta teach this to our children. And so, what is the difference between this word, these words, honor and obey? So when you are a child, you obey, right? Uh, Paul says to honor and obey, honor and obey your mother and your father. But there's a difference between honor and obey. And the difference is, is when you are a child, you obey. But when you become an adult, you learn how to honor. And so as a result, you a child, you obey. But then you go into adulthood, you learn to honor. And as a consequence, you then honor and obey. They go hand in hand. And so uh, should you make your child, as they say, mind you, should you make your child, uh, you know, you know, uh, listen to you? Yes, because if they honor and obey, the result will be long life and things will be well with them. And that's the question. How much do you really love your children? Because if you love them with a godly love, then you would want you your desire should be for them to honor and obey you so that they'll live a long life. You, you're bringing judgment to your children and to yourself, I will submit to you, when you don't correct them when they're wrong. Uh, and, and there's no child that that's, that's so cute and so precious and so whatever that they are above correction. Now, how you correct is a different thing. And I do believe that you should never chastise or correct your child out of anger and things of that nature. Uh, but uh, you got to understand that when you fail to make your children uh, mind you, to listen to you, uh, to obey you, uh, you're opening them up for judgment. And then when they get into the adulthood, you can't do a thing with them. It's too late. You can't raise grown people. 
All right, let me move on here. So, because we, we got to get through this on tonight. So, uh, when we fail to make our children honor and obey, we open them up to a pathway of destruction. And how many of our children, and how many adults do you see that have a trail of just destruction? Because when they were young, the parents gave them everything they wanted, but did not make them listen. And I, I, I'll never forget, for, you know, those that, I can't remember what episode it is, but there was an episode on Andy Griffin where, uh, you know, Andy, you know, he's the sheriff, and he tells this young man, and I forget the, the kid's name, uh, he tells him, you know, uh, that uh, stop riding, you know, on the sidewalk. He, he, I, I can't remember the, the boy's name. I see his face, I can't think of his name. But he's riding his bike on the sidewalk, and the Barnett told him stop riding on the sidewalk. And so, you know, uh, when Andy gets him, he says, hey, he said, uh, you know, don't ride on this, you know, sidewalk so you can hurt somebody. And, um, you know, Barney says, hey, look, I told him earlier. And uh, he said, well, did, Jeff, did Deputy Fife tell you not to, you know, uh, ride on the sidewalk, you know, earlier? Uh, yeah, he did. And, you know, you see the kid getting attitude. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, his dad. His dad, you know, his dad, you know, this, this that, and third. You'll see, you know, uh, I'm going to tell my dad. And so they take the bike back to the uh, police uh, station and, um, uh, or, you know, or to the sheriff's department and uh, sheriff's station, rather. And uh, the boy's father comes in. He's like, hey, can you just give him back his bike? But then when he saw the kid just ranting and raving and, and just cutting up, he said, uh, you know what? No, I'll keep the bike. And uh, Andy says, uh, you know, that if you really want to end this conversation, I'm paraphrasing on a good note, you know, uh, there's a there's a shed out back. As, you know, basically he was saying, there's, you know, there's some, some switches out there in the rear. Um, and, and so... What, what that is to suggest is that the child needed some structure. And children without structure are children that are headed straight for destruction. So you as a parent, we as parents, guardians, what have you, we've got to teach them right from wrong. And, uh, and, 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 and because if we don't, uh, then we can open them up for uh, destruction and judgment. So why are so many of our youth in unfavorable unfavorable predicaments. And I just said it because our parents and guardians are, are failing to teach our children to honor and obey. It's an old school term, uh, but uh, I, I sincerely believe that whether you are the mother or the father, your children should honor and obey you and respect you. And it should be taught to them and it should be reflected in the home. Period. Point blank. Um, honor and obeying are not optional or open for discussion. You know, and so we, you know, we should not live to where, uh, you know, you know, now, you know, because it used to be, uh, again, uh, we didn't have a choice of whether we were going, you know, uh, go to church or work in the church or uh, uh, be a part of things within the community. Uh, your parent, you did it because that's what you had to do. Uh, now, you know, your parents now, well, I, I'll let you do so and so if you do. No, we, well, you got to make sure that the parent hat stays on. And a parent, a good parent can be a good parent uh, and also be a parent that is a trustworthy source. Uh, but I believe that um, you got that oil and water type situation when you try to be uh, the parent and the friend. And you, and you can have a good relationship with your child. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but then you got to make sure that, 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 that you can't be too close to when it's time to tell them right from wrong. Uh, they so used to you being their friend that they, they, they won't receive your correction. And so you've got to, parenting is not, there's no, you know, there's a lot of books out there. But the reality is, when we look at the, the godly way, we understand that there's a structure that God has implemented. And we are to follow that. So even in your adult years, honor should cause you to give weight to your parents. So your parents should be more valuable than your friends. And I, I look over my life, and certainly so. I look at my mother, she, my, we have a great relationship, but she is more valuable to me the older I get. Than my friends, uh, simply because there's some things, uh, not some things, a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, that that only a mother would do. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't care who. Uh, there's some things that only a mother would do for you, and so you you've got to have more weight um, uh, and give more weight to your parents um, than you do uh, to your friends, uh, simply because your parents, the older you get, they're gonna be there for you when other folks begin to thin out. And, and so uh, our parents should be more value, valuable to us as we get older. Uh, because no matter how close you may be, uh, they're still our parents. So even, you know, I'm 36. My mother is still my mother. And, and, and I give her that honor and I obey her. Right? Uh, I, I, you know, so, so what that looks like as an adult is 
um, you know, she asked me to do something, um, I, you know, you don't smack your, you smack your teeth and all of that. You, 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 even when there's things you don't want to do, you do it anyway because that's the honor that's due them. That is the honor that's due them. Well, you know, and, and you got some people, well, he never was in my life. They don't deserve. Do we see in the text where it says, even if you got a parent that was not there in your household as they should be, you do what you're supposed to do. And let God handle the rest. And that's where a lot of times we go wrong. Is because we look at the husband, look at the wife, but well, she's not doing her part. Even if and I and I heard one of my mentors say this some years ago. He said, even if my wife was the the the, the wicked witch of the West, I still gotta love her. And that's so true. And, and and there are some perhaps unfriendly wives out there, you know. Uh, but the husband still gotta love her. Um, same thing with the husband. Uh, you know, even if the husband uh, you know, suppose he does not make all the best choices. Again, as long as he's not asking you to do anything ungodly, uh, immoral, or cause any harm, then you are to honor him. You are to honor, that is what is due to him according to the word of God. And you should never be involved with anybody uh, that you're not going to be able to honor. And so uh, the roles are clearly defined in the word of God. That parents have a role, the children have a role, and the spouses have a role. Uh, we that, that there's a structure within the godly family. We give reverence and honor to God. The, 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 the husband loves the wife. The wife uh, submits to the husband. And uh, the children are to honor and obey their parents. Okay, so parents give you an amazing sense of direction. Exodus uh, 20 and 12, it says, honor your father and mother. That you may have a long, good life in the land the Lord your God will give you. This is what, again, I suggest to us. That if we want to see um, this generation become the generation that God desires for it to be, then we've got to go back to the word of God when we look at the family structure. And again, a lot of times it may seem like it's outdated. It may seem like, oh, you know, this is something outdated, antiquated. This is just extinct. But it's the word of God. And, and, and even if the even when the heavens and the earth pass away, the Bible says that his word is going to stand forever. So regardless of how much our times change, regardless of what becomes of our society, the roles as it relates to a godly house never changes because God said so. And he, he has given the instructions as he intended. Let me read one more thing. So we talked about how the children should honor and obey their parents. But then parents, let's not forget, uh, your role as, as, as teaching them and training them up in the way of God. Verse 4 of uh, Ephesians chapter 6 says this from the NIV for, version. It says, fathers, uh, do not uh, exasperate your children. Um, and, you know, fathers or parents, do not exasperate your, your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. So, so he says, now you as the parents, don't provoke your children to anger. Again, we're talking about a godly family. Family matters. You know, it, it, family matters to God. And in a godly family, you ask the parent, even though your children should honor and obey you, you should never take advantage of that. In other words, you know how, you know, you know, you just say anything that you want to, to the child, and they still supposed to mind you. Now, what that, now that, that's some of the toxicity that we deal with in the family. Because you can't talk your children any kind of way and expect for them. That's just not, that's just, that's not even normal. <laughs> you know, that's not Christ-centered for you to talk to your children any kind of way. And then it's still expect for them to reverence you as your, as, you got to have a certain lifestyle in front of your children. That they will want to honor you. You know, and that's the other part is your children, as you teach them to honor and obey, you need to give them a reason to honor and obey. You know, you need to give them a reason as to why uh, they should honor and obey you uh, simply because the reality is, is that we can't just say uh, because, you know, uh, uh, you, you, or think because you're the parents that you have a right to just say anything or do anything that you desire. That's not the way that God intended. So that same verse from the common English Bible says, as for parents, don't provoke your child to anger, but raise them with discipline and instruction about the Lord. Uh, from the Good News Translation, it says, parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instruction. So in other words, you as a parent, it should never, ever be 
your role or your desire to enrage your children. All right. So, so, so I've already said uh, on tonight uh, that the child's primary responsibility is to obey God. I'm going to give you two more points and uh, we're, we're going to um, uh, wrap this up. The point number two is that children are a gift from God and they should be treated as such. They are not yours, but rather God has loaned them to you. As parents, we are blessed to be able to bring them into this world uh, through the help of God, but your children do not belong to you. I know they carry your last name, you pay the bills, you, you clothe them, you feed them, but you, the, the children at the end of the day, they belong to God. He's just loaned them to us for a certain season, and some seasons are longer than others. Some parents have lost children, uh, and, and some have not, uh, but we should always look at our children, children as being a gift, and that gift is something that can be taken away. So that does not mean that your children, you know, and it's very unfortunate, I think, when parents have to bury their children. And I don't, you know, I don't think a parent should have to. But nonetheless, in cases, in some of the cases, they do, you know, they do. And we've seen that. But the reality is, is when we look at it, uh, they, they've only been long to you. They, they, they're not going to be here forever. And, uh, and so you must understand that they are a gift from God. And any time God desires, he can take them back. Uh, Psalm 127, verse 3 from the easy to read version says, Children are a gift from the Lord, a reward from a mother's womb. Now, here's the thing I want to deal with before we go into the third, uh, third point and we're going to close. Is Here's one of the stigmas we deal with in our community. Uh, is, is I love all my children the same way. I love all my children the same way. And the truth be told, it's not possible for you to love all your children the same way. And I, I know I'm just not some tops off some bottles, but all here, here's why. Because all your children are not the same. And their needs are not the same. Some children are more emotional than others. So they cannot be loved the same way. You, you may have a child that's more emotional, so they may be a hugger. But then you may have a child that's, you know, more, you know, a little bit, a little bit more withdrawn from their emotions. So they may not be huggers. Doesn't mean that they love the parent any more, any less. But uh, what that means is that the, the love is expressed differently. So so the hug is a sign of love. And then the one that's not a hugger, uh, you know, uh, he or she uh, may go about sending a text message or, or, or cash up in your money uh, for, for lunch. Is still a uh, display of love. And so uh, the I love my children all the same way, it sounds good. But realistically speaking, you can't love all your children the same way because no two children are the same. Well, I got all girls. None of your girls are the same. Uh, but but so, so all your children are not the same. And so their needs are not the same. So they cannot be loved the same way. But rather, they should be loved sufficiently. Find out how to love your children, right? Uh, to where they can feel and see and sense the love. Um, ex uh, example, uh, uh, you know, um, babies need more attention than teenagers. So therefore, the love is displayed differently. You got a teenager and a baby in, in the household you can't so you can't show love the same way. How are you gonna show love the same way? So you can tell me that baby that you change their diaper, you feed them, you burp them, and uh, you give them a bath, uh, and then you got a teenager who's able to do all that stuff. You got a teenager who's able to do all that stuff on their own, and uh, 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 how how can you show love the same way? You you gotta minister to them according to their need. So the baby has to be fed and changed. The teenager does not. And so the goal is to love our children in a way where uh, uh, they are loved sufficiently and there is no difference shown. And so the goal should be rather than saying, I love my children the same way. The goal should be to love them where there is no partiality or difference shown because we should never be in the habit of mistreating our children. We can't love them the same way because they're not all the same. But we should be able to love them amen, effectively and sufficiently without a difference being shown. And so if a mother has, uh, you know, if she has six children over the span of 18 years, the first child 
uh, and 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 uh, let me just say it like this: I, I believe my my mother's mother had uh, I can't remember. Called. I think she had like sixteen children. And so my my the first child, my my, my great uncle Weldon, um, was the first child, and then my great aunt Doris was the um, was the, uh, the the last. And amazingly, all, amazingly, um, all the children in between them died, and then at the end, it was the oldest and the youngest that were that were left. Um, that, that was that was amazing. But I, nonetheless, there is no way that 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 she loved Uncle Weldon, my great grandmother, loved him the same way she loved Aunt Dawn. Simply because when the first child comes, it's a different kind of love than when you get to the sixth child. Now you uh, you got sixteen children. You get to the first child, okay. And y'all know it's true because the first child, that person, that child may have a ton of pictures. But even you get to that fourth child, they might be two or three. <laughs> you know, things change. Uh, uh, and so the first child is loved differently than probably the sixth or seventh or eighth child. They are all loved, but it, but but if but if 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 she was able to love. Uh, or to buy, perhaps she was able to buy some type of, and in that time, you know, bassinets, I don't even know if they existed, probably not. Uh, but it, let me just, for, for points of, uh, a, you know, example, um, if she was able to buy a bassinet for the first child, but then could buy a crib and a bassinet for the second child, um, it's not the same for both, but that doesn't mean that she loved differently. Because perhaps for the first child, she was not able to do uh, like she did for the first and the second. And so what I'm, the point I'm trying to get to is that you got to love in accordance to where you are. And so many times parents are going broke around Christmas trying to show children that they love them. And that's not what God intended. God intended for you to minister to your child throughout the year so that the reality is, is that if they don't get any gift under the tree, that they understand that they, that they are loved because gifts are good. But it's the heart. That, that you give behind the gift that matters the most. So so uh, the third point is you will make yourself miserable. Try to make sure that you love your children the same. You can ensure their needs are met, but the love does not have to be displayed the same. So so um, one of the things could be that um, you know one one child can say uh, you, you bought. Uh, you know, the first child a car and didn't buy me one. Um, and so uh, sometimes that has nothing to do with love, but rather it could be a change in the finances. And so what happens is, uh, you know, you were making decent money on the first child, so you bought the first child a car. But then when the second child came, you weren't making, you want to make it half. And so you weren't able to buy that second child a car. Uh, but what happened is, so that, so that we prove something, we, we will work ourselves into a grave trying to show that I do, I, I, you know, I treat all my children the same. And that's not, I submit to you, not the responsibility. The, respo the responsibility is, is that you should love your, ch your children in a way, excuse me, to where it is displayed correctly and effectively. You'll kill yourself trying to love all your children the same. You are just to ensure that their needs are met. And sometimes it happens, what you did for the first two, you may not be able to do for the third. Or what you did for the first, uh, or for the third, you may not have done for the first two. And you can't beat yourself down about it. Things change, life changes, life happens. So the goal of a parent should be to constantly meet your child where they are as it relates to ministering to them in love. And that, that, that concludes our series of Family Matters. You can drop your prayer request in the chat um, uh, on, on tonight if you desire to do so. Uh, we're praying for, for you and we're praying for our community. We're praying for our world. Uh, we're praying for, uh, for those that are going through grief and bereavement. Uh, we're praying for those that may be still stuck in 2023 mentally, uh, even though they're in another year. And I submit to you humbly uh, that uh, when you transition from one year to the next, you've got to transition mentally. You gotta transition mentally, um, and they don't mean, as I said on Sunday, you know, we, you know, we see it on Facebook all the time. I'm cutting this person off. I'm cutting them off. Well, I'm, you know, you gotta show people, you know, that, that you know, all these uh, uh, posts that you see, you know, the, uh, around the end of the year, first of the year, and, uh, about how, you know, you show people, you know, that that you could make it without them before they make all all this stuff that, that you just see. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, uh, talk is cheap. 
anybody can post anything. Uh, and, and, and the reality, and not only that, you gotta be careful how you start cutting folks off because sometimes you can cut off the hand that feeds you. Uh, don't allow yourself to be so in in uh, into flesh and into carnality, into the carnal rather, that you make some unwise choices. You know, someone offends you, and so because you're mad, you cut them off. And that might be the person that you need next week. So seek the Lord before you start cutting folks off. You know, I'm not saying that some folks ain't going to need to be cut off because they might need to. But the reality, you know, but we, we got to be careful how you start cutting folks off. Uh, because if that's the same person you might need, it, it, it may not. You, it, how, how you think that's going to feel or seem um, when you go when you got to turn right back around and go to them and tell them, hey, I need you to do this and so. You know, so 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 we, we we've just got to uh, have a mindset change um, in this new year and uh, praying for those that have not switched from 2023 to 2024 uh, that, that you will make that switch in your mind and be transformed uh, by the renewing of your minds. Again, to our Growbites, we are in the midst of our 31 days of spiritual growth. I hope that you are reading your word uh, as we have given out the calendars. If there's anyone else desire to have that, uh, we can send it to you. Um, you, can, you can put your email address in the chat thread or you can send a direct message or however you want to do um, to us and we'll get it to you. Um, we don't, you know, of course we as a church family are doing it jointly, but we don't just say, well, you got to be here. Part, you know, you know, the Bible says that we should all fast and pray. Um, and so uh, even though there's something that we are doing within our church here, uh, you can certainly be a part of that as well. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, for this time. And God, we thank you for allowing us to come to a conclusion of this series. And God, I ask you to bless uh, the hearers, that we not only be hearers, but doers of your word. Bless those that are just going through tough times. And God, we ask you to just continue to be the God of all comfort. Make ways, show up and show out. And God, show yourself strong and mighty. Where we're weak, God, we ask you to make us strong. And God, where we're torn down, we ask you to build us back up again. And God, whatever way we may be on tonight, God, we know that you're able to see us through. And so, God, we ask that you continue to create in us clean hearts, that, God, we will have pure intentions as we go through the remainder of this year. Thank you for where you brought us from and where you're taking us to. And, God, we thank you for where we are right now. We give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the, play, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Uh, join us tomorrow night. We'll be here at 7 o'clock p.m. for our re winter revival with Dr. Kathy Jones. So all roads meet the elite. Uh, here at the Grove uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m. for the start of our Winter Revival 2024. God bless you. Have a good night.